In a previous video, I used a trick related to the roots of a certain quadratic polynomial and the closed form of a recursively defined sequence. And I asked if there was anyone out there that wanted to see that trick proven. And a couple of you guys said yes. And so this is that video where we go over that trick. Okay, so let's recall what we did back then. So if we've got this recursively defined sequence, a n plus two equals capital A, a sub n plus one, plus capital B, a sub n, then we know the closed form from this for this sequence, a n is of the form capital R, r one to the n, plus capital S, r two to the n, where r1 and r2 are the distinct roots of the following polynomial, which is known as the characteristic polynomial related to this recursive sequence. So we've got x squared equals ax minus b equals zero. And you might say, well, what about the seeds? And so this allows us to define the n plus second term in terms of the n plus first term and the nth term. Well, what about the zeroth term and the first term or the first term and the second term, depending on how we define this? Well, it turns out that that will not influence these roots at all. That will influence these numbers here, capital R and capital S, which are constants. So that's something that you would take care of afterwards. Looking at this polynomial and finding the roots will give you a rough idea of the closed form. So I think if you were to look at a standard proof of this fact, you would start with an educated guess that the sequence has this following closed form and then show any sequence with this closed form obeys this recursion. And that's a reasonable way to do this because obeying this recursion has some sort of uniqueness property, but that's not the way we're gonna prove this. And that's because to a fault, I like to do things constructively. And that's exactly what we're gonna do here. We're gonna use a generating function. Okay, so let's start off by defining f of x to be the sum as n goes from zero up to infinity of a sub n x to the n. So in other words, that's our generating function for our recursively defined sequence. Okay, now we'll take out the first term and the second term, or maybe the zeroth term and the first term, depending on how you're counting. So we'll have a zero plus a one x plus, now left over, we'll have the sum as n goes from two up to infinity of a sub n x to the n. Now we can re-index this stuff right here so that the n's are replaced with n plus twos. And that'll be nice because then we'll have a sub n plus two and we can apply our defining recursion relation. Okay, so let's see what we get. We'll have a zero plus a one x plus the sum. Now n will go from zero up to infinity because if n plus two is equal to two, n is equal to zero. And then we'll have a sub n plus two x to the n plus two. Now next up, like I alluded to, we will apply our recursion. So I'll replace this a n plus two with capital A, a n plus one plus capital B, B, a n. And then I'll pull that apart into two sums. So that's gonna give us a naught plus a one x plus a x times the sum as n goes from zero up to infinity of a n plus two one x to the n plus one plus b x squared and then the sum as n goes from zero up to infinity of a n x to the n. So I did a little bit of a simplification in the middle there. Notice here I have a times a n plus one times x to the n plus two. I took our capital A out and one of the x's out leaving us with x to the n plus one, and then the n plus first term of our sequence. We really want this index here to match with this exponent. Then I did something similar over here, but now we can notice that these objects that we've just created look a lot like our, our starting generating function. In fact, this one that I am squaring in blue is exactly our starting generating function. And this one is almost our starting generating function. Maybe we could re-index this and see exactly how it differs from f of x. 
So let's maybe take n and replace it with n minus 1. So we'll do that. So we'll have a n x to the n. And then notice we will start at n equals 1 now. OK, so let's write this down. We have a naught plus a 1 x plus a times x times the sum as n goes from 1 up to infinity of a n x to the n. And then we have plus bx squared times f of x, like that. Now, this guy right here is our original generating function, but it's missing the n equals 0 term. But we can easily fix that. Let's add in the 0th term here. But if we add in the 0th term, we also have to subtract the 0th term. But the 0th term is just a 0 times x to the 0, or just a 0. But let's recall that this sum was multiplied by a x. That means the correction term that we include also must be multiplied by a x. So now let's take all of this and rewrite it a little bit before we move on to the next board. So this bit right here will be equal to a times x times f of x minus a 0. So now look up here. We've got f of x equals a naught plus a 1x plus a times x times f of x minus a 0 plus bx squared f of x. So that's a nice equation that we can use to solve for f of x. But let's maybe bring the results of this board to the top and we'll move on to the next. The last calculation we did gave us the following equation that we can solve for f of x, which recall was our generating function for our recursively defined sequence. Now we can move some things around and easily solve for f of x. So let's see, we've got f of x is equal to a naught plus a1 minus a a naught times x over, let's see, it'll be 1 minus ax minus bx squared. So I've combined a couple steps, but we get this from moving this term over, this term over, factoring an f of x out of the whole left-hand side, and then dividing. And now look at what we've got. We've got a linear polynomial in the numerator. We have a quadratic polynomial in the denominator. But it's not quite the quadratic polynomial that we have over here squared in blue. But it's very related to that polynomial, which is over there squared in blue. And it's related via the following lemma, which I won't prove, but I'll let you guys prove. It's pretty easy to check. And that is if x squared minus ax minus b factors as x minus r1 times x minus r2, which we're assuming that that happens given that r1 and r2 are roots of this quadratic polynomial, then the one that we have encountered factors kind of similarly. So 1 minus ax minus bx squared factors like 1 minus r1x, 1 minus r2x. Great. So like I said, I'll let you guys check that. That's not too hard to do. But now we will apply this result to our rational function version of our generating function. OK, so let's see. We've got a0 plus a1 minus a a0 x over 1 minus r1x times 1 minus r2 times x. But now we can do a partial fraction decomposition here. And that's possible because we have factored the denominator into distinct linear terms. So in fact, this factorization will look like capital R over 1 minus r1x plus capital S over 1 minus r2x. And here r and s those are going to depend on our first term of our recursion, this capital A, as well as A0 and A1. So I'll say A, A0, and A1, like that. OK, nice. But now we can re-expand this like geometric series. And that will give us our sum as n goes from 0 to infinity of r times r1 to the n plus s times r2 to the n all times x to the n. So really, I expanded those as two geometric series and then smashed them together.
But now from here, let's bring down our definition of f of x, which was the sum as n goes from 0 up to infinity of a sub n x to the n. And we see just by comparing coefficients of x to the n on both sides, we have built the closed form of our recursively defined sequence. And it is, it is exactly what we would like it to be. But all of this only works if R1 and R2 are distinct roots. So what happens if they are not distinct roots? Well, luckily we can start from this step right here with a slightly different lemma and finish that off pretty quickly. So we're done looking at the case when we have distinct roots for the characteristic polynomial of our recursively defined sequence. Now we wanna see what happens when we have repeated roots. So in other words, R1 and R2 are equal, and they're equal to something which we will denote by little r or lowercase r. So the following lemma follows from the lemma that we had on the last board, just for the case when you have non-distinct roots. And that is if x squared minus ax minus b factors like x minus r squared, then one minus ax minus bx squared factors as one minus rx squared. That means we can take the rational function version of our generating function and define it like, or, and write it like this. So we've got a linear polynomial in the numerator and then this one minus r times x quantity squared in the denominator. But again, via some partial fraction decomposition, we can pull this apart into two pieces. And now the pieces will be r over 1 minus rx plus s over 1 minus rx squared. So let's notice that if we were to put these back together, we would multiply this capital R by 1 minus rx. It would become a linear polynomial. We would add them back together and we would have a linear polynomial in the, denom in the numerator. So that gives you some idea of how this capital R and S are related to A naught A1 and capital A. Okay, so from here we'll expand each of these kind of similar to what we did before, but we're in a little bit of trouble because this is not exactly a geometric series, but luckily it's the derivative of a geometric series. So in fact, this is equal to, well, let's see if we can get it right, s over r times the derivative with respect to x of one minus rx. So that means that we can take each of these, expand them, keeping in mind that we have to take the derivative of the second one. So this is gonna give us r times the sum as n goes from zero up to infinity of r n x to the n plus s over little r, and then we'll have the derivative of the sum as n goes from zero to infinity of r to the n, x to the n. But that derivative is pretty easy to take, just term by term. And that'll give us the sum as n goes from zero up to infinity of n times r n times x to the n minus one. Finally, we can play some tricks that are pretty similar to what we did before to push these two together. And what we will end up with is the sum as n goes from zero to infinity of r plus n times s times r to the n x to the n where this capital R and S have been renamed appropriately from our original R and S to absorb any of the constants that were there. But now rewriting f of x as its original definition, so the sum as n goes from zero to infinity of a sub n x to the n, and then extracting the coefficient of x to the n from both sides, we see that we've found a closed form in this case where we do not have distinct roots. Okay, so let's finish this video off with a quick example. Okay, so let's finish this off with one example. So let's say we've got the following recursively defined sequence. So the zeroth term, a0 is four, the first term, a1 is one, and then our two-step recursion is given as follows. So an plus two is equal to three, an plus one minus two an. So what we've got over here gives us a nice polynomial which we should look at. 
And that'll allow us to quickly write down a rough draft of the closed form that we can maybe tweak until we've got the exact closed form. Okay, so let's jump into it. So we'll look at maybe this thing that I'm calling the characteristic polynomial of the recursively defined sequence. So in this case, it will be x squared minus 3x plus 2 equals 0. We need to find the roots of that. That's because capital A here, like over here, is equal to 3 and capital B is equal to negative 2. All right, but now let's notice that this thing um, factors pretty nicely. This is x minus 2 times x minus 1 equals 0. Okay, so that means a n is equal to capital R times 2 to the n plus capital S times 1 to the n because 2 and 1 are the roots to that polynomial. Well, obviously 1 to the n is always n, so that's not super interesting. But now we can apply these initial conditions to find values of r and s. So let's notice that on the one hand, we are given that a0 is 4, but on the other hand, we know a0 has the form r times 2 to the 0, which is 1, plus s times 1 to the 0, which is also 1. So we've got this equation, 4 is equal to r plus s. And then likewise, we're given that a1 is equal to 1, but on the other hand, it's equal to 2r plus s, just by plugging 1 into this rough draft of our closed form. That gives us a system of equations for r and s. Let's see what we can do with it. Maybe we'll take this second equation and subtract the first equation. So that'll have the nice simplifying effect of getting rid of the s. So we'll have 2r minus r is just r, and then we'll have 1 minus 4 is negative 3. So that means this number right here must be equal to negative 3. But now we can plug this value of r into either of these two equations in order to get a value for s, and you'll see that s is equal to 7. So that finally gives us our closed form, a n is equal to minus 3 times 2 to the n plus 7. And that's a good place to stop.